Okay, YouTube modelers. To start with the video on painting the hull, these are the paints that I use to paint the hull. I use the Duplicolor Sandable Primer to put down a primer coat. And I think this is a lacquer base primer. And then for the colors to put over top of those, I just use the Krylon Color Master paint. And these colors are also supposed to be a paint and primer in one. But for the black, it's just a satin black. For the red, it's also a satin color. Turned out a little too red. The cap looked just right, like a light red, but it came out a nice good red the white is also just satin and then for the yellow strip I just used model masters acrylic and it is the chrome yellow so those are the paints that I use to paint the hull so next I'll show the steps that I use to paint the hull and it'll be in a slideshow format The first step with any paint job is to prime the surface. So even though the Krylon paint is a primer plus paint in one, I still did a separate primer coat first with the Duplicolor primer. I did do some light sanding first, but only on the smooth parts of the hull. I decided to do the yellow first. I loaded an airbrush with Model Masters acrylic chrome yellow paint and sprayed the area of the hull that has the yellow strip. Once dry, I used Tamiya masking tape for curves. The size of the yellow strip on this model is around 2 millimeters, so 2 millimeter Tamiya tape worked just fine. And since this tape is flexible, I had no problem taping the areas of the hull. I had no problem taping around the stern of the model. And I also had no major problems taping the midship area where the rivet and added plate details were molded into the hull. With the 2 millimeter tape in place, the yellow strip underneath would be protected when painting black below the tape and white above the tape. Once the white and black paint was dry, I removed the tape and a nice 2 millimeter yellow strip was formed with only a few areas requiring minor touch-up work. Next, it was time to find where the line between the black and red paint was located on the hull. After some research, the easiest method was to use the hull shell plates and condenser discharge opening. This information came from titanic-cad-plans.com in the article entitled Separation Line Between Titanic's Hull Black Paint and Anti-Fouling Paint. Modelers can review this article for the details, but in summary, there are three reference points to use, and they are as follows. At the stern perpendicular, the black-red line is just below where the inner shell plate P-row and outer shell plate O-row intersect as shown in the picture. A full-size picture of the Olympic used as a reference in the article can be seen in the book Titanic and her sisters, Olympic and Britannic, on page 117. After reviewing this picture, you will note that there is a row of shell plating missing from the model below row O. So do not get confused. Just use the first outer shell plating row below the last row of portholes. This is row or strake O. The reference point at the bow also locates the paint line just below where the inner shell plate row P and outer shell plate row O intersect, as shown in the picture of the bow. The last reference point has the black red line running through the middle part of the condenser discharge grill. The picture shows where this photo edge part is located on the model. On my model, the grill is at about 288 millimeters from the rear perpendicular. On the actual ship, it should be around 297 millimeters, so 
I didn't put it quite in the right place, but I used a location where there were no sewer portholes. So it's close enough. As a side note, here's a picture of Titanic before the promenade plating was added according to the footnote. And you can see that the discharge grill is above the black red line. In the next picture, we see the Olympic with the discharge grill below the black red line. And in the picture of the Olympic used in the article found on Titanic CAD Plan's website, one will see the black red line going through the middle of the discharge grill. So I just chose the middle ground. The choice is yours. The photo etched parts for the discharge grill are parts PEA48 and PEA50. Please note that the instructions on page 10 for this model have the model putting these parts in the wrong place. These grills should be above the waterline, not below it, like parts PEA49 and PEA51. Parts 49 and 51 are the condenser inlet openings where seawater is pumped into the condensers from the sea, thus they are below the waterline. With these reference points in mind, taping the hull will produce basically a straight line from the forward well deck to the aft well deck. I use the tiny sewer portholes between the well decks as a line to follow between the well decks. From the well decks, the line will make a gradual and very small curve upward to the bow and stern reference points. The result is a nice semi-straight line similar to that seen on the actual Olympic class ships with the black red line at the bow above the water line more so than at the stern. So there you have it. My red color may have turned out too deep of a red due to the darker rust red primer color I used, but the whole colors turned out good enough for me. The Krylon paint adhered well to the plastic with no paint peeling issues when removing the masking tape. Hopefully this tutorial gives the modeler some idea of how to paint the hull of the Trumpeter 1-200 scale Titanic. So until next video, have a great day.